Oh, yeah, he was yeah. out. He was out. Oh, yeah, we was walking up here. I was like, he got out. Ooh. He was out before I could get yeah, to Yeah, yeah, he got out quick. Tomorrow. That is a ride. I don't know what the hell went flying up there, but I thought it was damn helmet at first. I think it was part of that vibe that come out. Yeah. Hey guys, Sean again here, Resident Evil Racing. Uh, Going to do another weekend recap. Uh, I did a weekend recap on the last race we was at, but the video was just so long. Uh, I'll probably still post it, but it's going to be a longer video. Did a lot of talking because we had a good weekend. Uh, that was when we went to uh, Benton Raceway for that 573 uh, boot hill battle. But anyway, this is a weekend recap for uh battle beyond 660 uh it's back of the track race uh so well it's not it was a it was an interesting night that's for sure so to get started we we get up early it's a it's it's a gates open eight o'clock deal early so we're up early getting getting gone we get there get the car unloaded uh start you know we get it warmed up and all that stuff get ready for chip draw at 11 so the way i do it is i warm the car i like to usually warm the car up about an hour before chip draw uh somewhere around in there to get i got to get heat in the motor it's aluminum rod titanium spring titanium valve motor so you want to get heat in that thing get this is when it's colder outside uh get get the oil good and warm uh get the rods uh heated real good uh and all that, all that, all that good jazz. So we did all that. Come to find out, chip draw wasn't going to be. We didn't draw chip till like twelve thirty. So uh, cooled down more than what I expected. But hey, it's it's all right. I mean, we did get the heat in the motor anyway. So uh, it took a minute for it to get warm back up, but we got it back up there. So go up first round. We did chip draw. We do a twin turbo uh, little notchback Mustang. Uh, it's kind of parked catty corner from us. Pretty car. We just got it done. So we go up there. We're fourth pair down. Uh, and I do all my procedures. We we get me lined up. Uh, thanks to Trent. Uh, it's a good friend now. We 
he helps me at all the races. It's just me and my wife that usually go, so she got the kids, so it's kind of hard for her to do anything like that, backing me up and getting me in the groove, which I kind of want her to, to get used to because Trent's not always going to be there. So uh, anyway, we, we got up there. He got me lined up. Uh, Matt Spencer is the one that put the, put it on. He's the flagger, flashlight start. Uh, so he doesn't walk back and bang a flashlight. He's got one on his hat like Limpy does. He's, it's a lot better to control, a lot less anticipation on the light, people trying to guess the flashlight. you know. Anyway, I'm a firm believer. If you want to do that, do it. If you get it, good for you. If you miss it, bad for you. Uh, so I'm not all these whiners trying to guess the light. They cry, oh, you guess the light, or... Oh, you know, I'm not going to be friends now because, you know, whatever that jazz with with no prep kings deal. Uh, I'm not going to get into that, but I'm not. Uh, I'm a firm believer if you can guess the light and you can get, take off and you're a slower car, more power to you, more power to you. It's like a bracket racer going up there telling the other bracket racer, don't you cut a good, perfect light on me because I want a chance to win. Come on, man. Y'all you know, cut all that crybaby ass shit out. Well, anyway, he gets up there. And I thought I seen the light come on, but it wasn't the light coming on. It was a reflection. So about the time I let go of the trans brake button, I seen the light. So we lucked out on a jump on that thing. I mean, I guess if they wanted to go back and really look at it and dial it down, I may have jumped. I mean, it was that close because it was a tire crack cam, all that stuff. If you slowed it down, I probably did jump. But anyway, we got out there. We left on him. Took off, traction control kicked in when it tried to start to spin the tires, did what it's supposed to, love it, love it. Uh, a lot of people hate it, but I love it. Uh, it grabbed the hole, pulled the timing out like it was supposed to, pulled the power out, and we were gone. I kept, I got mirrors on my car, so I'm looking in my, in my driver's mirror just to see if I could see him, see where he's at, and, and I see him, he's back there sliding, and so, tick, the on this, I didn't even look in my mirror until we're at three quarters of the way down the track. I glanced over because I never, you know, usually I can see him at either, you know, at the side of the window because I was in the right lane, but I never seen him. So I look and he's a sliding and I'm watching him slide. So I go across the finish line, I hit the brakes. Next thing you know, he slides sideways and starts to roll. So when he st the tires come up and starts to roll, I watch him completely flip sideways. The car eventually spirals up, I'm probably talking eight feet, nine feet in the air, starts going end over end, coming at me. I get back in the gas just to keep from him from rolling because it went, okay, so back up. He was about four cars behind me when he started sliding, and uh, so I was still up in front of him enough to where I don't think he would have hit me. But I would have had to come to a stop. Well, I didn't. I didn't because I didn't know how fast he was flipping. But he flipped this thing probably about seven or eight times before it rested against the side. It's a kind of an embankment that goes up a little small ditch, and an embankment goes up in the shutdown area. Because you got to look, guys, we're racing the shutdown area on this thing at this track. So the eighth, there's an eighth mile, then it starts up a hill. You start going up a little incline on a hill for slowdown, and then it levels back off, and then you turn at the end and come back up. So by the time I got my car stopped. I was already at the end of the track because I had had to speed up a little bit more to get away from him. So by the time I got stopped and got everything shut off, I flipped the belts, I jumped out, and I took off running. I'm running back down to this guy trying to get to him. I got my helmet on. I can't get my helmet off. I can't get my neck, neck restraint off. I'm trying to do all this stuff as I'm trying to run down there. And give us a it's probably a good 300 feet some around in there 200 feet to where he's at so i'm getting it i'm running i'm running and next thing i know i see him crawl out and stand up and when he stands up he's pulling his helmet off and i finally get there i got finally got my helmet off probably three quarters of the way there so i'm huffing and puffing i'm like man and i asked him if he's all right and this guy walked away N nothing wrong with him or nothing uh so we'll in this video i'm going to post the pass from me and then i'm going to post a pass from a another camera angle that another guy took uh you can't really see an up close wreck you can just see the car slide and the people cringe and stuff like that and then you can see dust fly uh so you're not going to see a whole lot but you will see what the aftermath of the car is when the guy the camera guy gets up to the car i mean it's horrible it it's 
it shook me up to uh, once I get back, got back down there and I seen the car and I, but I seen he was all right. It, it shook me up too, uh, cause you, if that we could have been side by side, you don't. I mean, that type of racing and that type of stuff, you don't. You never know when or if it's going to be your turn, and uh, just pray that it's not your turn. Uh, I wish luck to them guys. They just got the car done. It was on the second or third pass for the car, uh, but. I'm going to preach about what I believe. What I believe is if a guy is out in front of you and you get squirrely to where your car is facing 10 o'clock in either 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock, whichever lane you're in, that way you lift to race another day. You don't keep on. You don't keep trying to mat it. You don't do this. If you watch some of my videos, you've seen the last two races that I went to. I'm at, you know, one was at 200 feet, the other one was at 400 feet. I got loose, I lifted, that's it. Because uh, you're not going to catch the guy. Now, if you're out in front, like say I wasn't by hell yeah, I was out in front, I got loose. Then I straightened it up and got back in it, but when I seen him come by me, I lifted, it was over with. You don't, you don't stay in it, guys. You don't keep trying to catch the guy that's in front of you. Because this type of racing, one little mess up, Unless both of you mess up, you're both done with. So, uh, hang on a minute. We got, I got some guys here in the trailer. God, it was some guys, I thought it was some guys in a, look, it's a race car trailer, but they're picking up some furniture here next door. So, I thought maybe I might have a street race on my hands here. We'll see, but nah, I can't get that lucky sometimes. Uh, but anyway, what I was saying is you don't, you if you're at, if you get squirrely and the other guy's in front of you, don't, don't look. To try to stay in it, try to be a hero. That guy lost his whole complete race car. I'm talking about it's done. There was there's no salvage in it. It's I mean it's one of, probably one of the worst tracks I've seen this year. So, but anyway, we're uh, we're thankful that you know he we wasn't beside him and he didn't hit us any. So uh, I'm gonna post posting videos in there and we'll uh, let y'all look at that and you know take a deal. But anyway, move on. We got to. We got up and pulled the chips for second round. Uh, we drew the guy that had the buy run the first round, a little nitrous S10. Uh, so we drew him, and we get up there. We're seventh pair down now. There was 41 cars in this event, seven pairs down. And uh, we get up there to run. I did my burnout. I, do a, I have a routine when I do this thing. I do my burnout. We back up, line up. Uh, turn the quarter valve, turn the nitrous on, activate the nitrous, uh, purge, all that stuff, turn on the data logger, pull up, stage, do all that stuff. So when I did all that stuff, we got up there and I got ready to stage, they stopped us, they shut us off. So when they shut us off, we, uh, we end up it's hard for my car to crank after it's warmed up. I got to go in, and matter of fact, I'm gonna do that today. Try to get it to where this thing will free fire really quickly. It does not want to start. It it'll keep whirling over, roll over. So we spent a minute and a half trying to get this thing to fire, and whirl it over, roll over, roll over. We had to shut the ECU off, turn it back on to reset it, because after seven seconds of starting, if it doesn't start, it'll go. It'll just be dead. It won't do nothing. Uh, it won't that way. It doesn't flood it out or whatever. Uh, so I'm gonna go in and look at that. But anyway, we got to turn it over, 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 over. We wouldn't start. I was all, all, almost done. They were getting ready to push me off. Well, it fired. Well, like we fired it. It got up there. We're already on the line where we're supposed to be. I didn't turn the nitrous on. But here's the thing. I have it set up to where anything under 12.1 volts, the nitrous system will not activate anyway. Uh, because I have a 16 volt system, so the way I have it set up in the ECUs, that it will, act, it will. The the way the coils are. It, the coils, if they're low of voltage for a setup for 16 volts, it will not fire the nitrous system anyway. So we were 11.6 volts uh, even when we left. Uh, so the nitrous system wasn't going to come on anyway. Even if I had armed it, it may have, it may not have, but the way the settings are, it wouldn't have come on. So we were dead in the water. When we left, it left this thing and it it was deterred because you got to look. Launch control is activated. When it releases the trans brake, it comes on whether nitrous is on or not. Uh, so I was done. He he took off. And the time the power came in, I was starting to pull him back uh, on motor. 
it just he was already so far out on me because the Nitros didn't come on and leave because it was so it was such of a turd when I left uh, that he was out on me by about three or four cars. And by the time the power started coming in, I may have reeled him back a car, but it was over with already after that anyway. So, but anyway, we lost. I was frustrated. We were getting, we were all, I was all agitated and mad. And my wife was mad, mad at, at Matt Spencer. And it's not his fault. He did a safety deal because the car at the other end was not completely off the track yet. That's a safety feature. Uh, so it's not his fault. He shut us off because he didn't know. But then as soon as he shut us off, the guy got off. So it was like, not even 30 seconds and so i gotta fix that that's my fault of, uh, because i'm used to being able to start it drive up there and then do what i have to do uh only one restart because i know once i start it and i go up there and i stop and i turn it off i've got enough to do one restart if you can hold off, it'll hold off for you know like if i turn it off and i'm sitting for a few minutes it will restart but shutting it off and trying to restart it back you know in 30 seconds or so it, it will not it will not restart so uh we got to fix that today we're going to try to get that taken care of i don't know if it's too lean it's not putting enough fuel in if it's putting too much in we're going to find out and then when we find out we'll fix it and then next time it'll be able to start no matter what so we'll fix that but anyway we got beat i went over to see if you do a re-race but it, it was i should have never did that because all in all it was my fault i didn't arm the nitrous system uh i knew i had battery issues because when we got there it was cold the battery was voltage was down so uh that was kind of a, a fault of mine I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a new 16 volt battery this winter uh we have one more race I'm not for sure if we're gonna do it or not but it's a battle of the bears uh 10 000 to win uh the 20th of this month so we'll we're gonna check that out and see we may run it we may not uh just depends car's running good uh still got a little wet cylinder in number one and we may got a little bit of a head gasket, but it still has pressure. It still, it doesn't bubble out all the, in the radiator and all that stuff. So we're going to keep running it. We'll just put a new plug in it every round and then keep going uh, until we can get this year over with and get it out and put some new head gaskets on. But other than that, man, we're, just, we're going to, we may try it. Uh, but that's the weekend recap. Uh, they end up splitting it five ways or something like that. Uh, $200 entry fee, 41 cars, you do the math. That they split that five ways so anyway we're gonna get off here you guys have a good weekend you get to hit that like button hit that subscribe button comment guys if y'all got questions just comment uh share these videos uh and we'll be putting something together for our videos you have a good day